I'm Elise Orlowski, a senior video director here at Kramer. And I'm Trip Underwood, a creative director at Kramer. And at Kramer, we work with so many incredibly fascinating people from all over multiple industries. We have so many great conversations, many that are just too good to keep to ourselves. So now we're sharing them with the world. Right here from Kramer Studios. This is Pivot Points. So welcome back to another episode of Pivot Points. Today we are talking actually with two people who are in the studio. We're super excited about something that I'm super, super passionate about, which is design. Um, I think classically, you know, design in reference to, you know, art is defined as like something that provokes emotion, right? And design is something that solves a problem. And I think especially for you guys here, um, our designers, Brad and Carrie, you know, they're super incredible problem solvers. And especially when it comes to events, you know, there's so many problems that we have to solve every day, (laughs) especially when it comes to design. Um, So I think to open up our first questions, I'm curious, Carrie and Brad, when it comes to design, what do you think often that during events you have to problem solve for that maybe people don't know about? Um, Well, the first thing I want to kind of pick up on is what you were saying about like art, be, like evoking emotion and designs more problem solving, which is totally true. But I feel like design also has emotion in it, but you're solving, sure. pr- you're, there's a purpose behind it. And yeah. design is always like, stra- like everything that we do, it looks nice, but there's always a strategy behind it and some logic behind it. And mm-hmm. that's what, that's what I love. So, I mean, different, there's such a wide range of events that we do create designs for and theme graphics for, um, and it it really is driven to resonate with whatever the audience is. You know, mm-hmm. so a lot of the a lot of theme graphics are motivational because it's a it's a sales uh, it's a it's a sales meeting and it's all these people they want to get like excited about it and it's like that that sets the stage for the for all the content that's going to be doing all the same thing. Yeah, and it's funny cuz obviously like a theme graphic is is art in a way cuz it's supposed to provoke emotion, right. it's supposed to be, get people excited about they want to come to your event. I'm curious Carrie, do you have any thoughts even just about, you know, the difference between art and design and like what you have to problem so- solve like on a daily basis? Yeah, I think uh, you know, Events, especially with going hybrid now, you have to design for so many different platforms, mediums. You know, is it environmental? Is it physical? Is it virtual? You know, it's just how to design across the spectrum, but keep a consistent look and feel, but variation between each piece. Yeah. What do you guys feel like? Because I feel like there's like design, classical design, and design is such like a broad term too. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> there's like now UX design, everything design. But I think in terms of events, what do you think the difference is between design and like event design? Because I think there's a lot, there's a huge kind of demographic that you guys cover when it comes to event design. What do you think the difference is? Or even maybe the misconception? Between design and, and designing for events. So, mm-hmm. so, uh, I always look at design as I always say design is design is design. It's like we're trying like no matter what we're what you're designing for, um, there that always needs to be sort of it, it always needs to evoke that emotion and and ha- and so I I I mean similar to what Carrie was just saying like the, like with this pivot into all of the virtual uh, platforms and doing everything virtually, there's still, it's, it's all still the same thing. They're just like different sizes and in different places. And a lot of the problem solving is, has to do with, um, I mean, in, in, in live events we're doing, um, it's, it's a lot of environmental and space things. So you're always putting yourself. And again, this is back to like design thinking and stuff and putting yourself in the, um, in the minds of the attendees. So if you're walking into a space, like, what are they going to see? Where are we going to put the banners? Where? So it's a lot of that. It's a lot of that kind of, it's almost like real world um, UX, like trying to get people to like go through and, and yeah. go go down the right interior hallways design. and things like interior design. Right. It's yeah. like all that stuff. Is is, attached. We but, do all of that stuff. It's all, yeah. it's all the same. Think, and it isn't like, lay, it just isn't like typical, like, Print design, layout, like layout stuff, like long copy and pictures. It's like it's just a lot of different things. Sure. I think with um, you know what was what is the difference? I think there is some similarities where you need to have that wow factor. You need to catch them, whether it's you know the first email blast that goes off for this a virtual event, but you need to have that like 
just eye catching design that is going to carry through and evolve for the event and you know whether it's virtual you know hybrid whatever um but you need to have that like eye catcher yeah and it's it's um it's really like the the visual kind of connective tissue that goes through an event so you might so like in other realms of design you might do something that's like a campaign that's like a social media campaign and it's like you're going to see a billboard you're going to see like in in real life and you're going to see stuff on social and it all kind of syncs but mm -hmm. like the event it's is all that but it's all the event communication it sort of is the you know from the first email that you get about like you should, you should come to this event or the first thing that you see that should like draw you in if you're right for the audience and go, and and drive you toward the toward that event yeah. and, so, and then go and carry that on through the platform so you yeah. know you're in the right place you're yeah, you're exactly. there it, it makes sense you know you you have that memory from the email blast or whatever it may be yep mm. yep yeah all the real world application that goes into not just creating, but then thinking about how it's going to exist within the world. Because writing, we do less of that. You, you write something, you say it, you send it out to the world, and people react positively or negatively, but that's kind of it. You guys are much more trying to influence how they think over a long period of time, I feel like, and it's a lot more visual and less less obvious than the written word, which yeah. is something I'm always fascinated by. And brand about. recognition too, right? Because, I mean, often <clears throat> y'all work with, like, here's the brand guidelines, this is the brand, and now how does this carry over into a specific spe um, specific event, but also how does it carry over into, again, social media, and then, like, the, the virtual platform or the physical set? Like, there's so many different things that, like, it all carries into that ultimately, if it's well-designed, you know, oh, that's that event that I'm going mm -hmm. to. And you can immediately, very quickly, like, recognize that. And it's it's interesting because it's, like, not an easy thing to do. No. It's actually quite difficult. <laughs> well, and also when you think about events that we do, like, year after year, um, what do you want? So the first year you did this, and now here we are at the next year. Do you want to keep the same kind of integrity of mm. the design from last year to kind of build equity in that look, which is a lot, what a lot of events do? And for several years, they'll have like a similar, um, a, a similar look and feel. Just so again, it's that recognition. So then next year, people are like, oh yeah, that event was great. Right. I want to go to that again. Mm -hmm. Or and then some people do something that's wildly different um, every year from yep. a visual standpoint, even though maybe the name of the event is the same so mm -hmm. there's there's always there there it's always rooted in logic and and um what from a marketing spec perspective makes the most right. sense and that, that's kind of a universal conundrum in marketing and advertising and yeah. at, at what point does consistency become old absolutely mm -hmm. you know yeah. and, and is it the idea of radically change it change it in incremental parts so it feels new but retains what it is and that's it's subjective and there's a science behind it so i, I find that yeah. stuff interesting mm -hmm. um let me ask you a question, and this may seem loaded, so let me know, but <laughs> what is it like to work with one of your main mediums being in PowerPoint or slides, which is something that I feel like has kind of a negative connotation in the world? I don't know many people that are like, I love working in, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, as somebody that works exclusively in writing programs, people are indifferent to it. No one loves mm -hmm. them, no one hates them. I know a lot of people that aren't, so they come in and be like, I don't want it to, to look like a PowerPoint. I'm like. It won't because we have professional designers. But I'm just, are you, do you feel any of that? Did you ever get any of that? Do you bristle when you hear that? Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, all the time we hear it from our clients or we hear it from, you know, people internally at Kramer. Um, but, you know, it's, I think it's just a container to hold the design. It's not necessarily like, oh, here's my header, here's my copy um, right. content. Um, I think, you know, there's ways to really make it, um, Divert, not diverse, uh, just uh, dynamic, dynamic. And, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, transitioning seamlessly or, you know, just just looking outside of the box and not keeping it so consistent, but staying with the brand and within the brand guidelines and, and the look and feel of the meeting and just blowing so it up, basically. It's <laughs> yeah. More of a can, less of a template, more of a canvas. Yeah. Right. But so you do hear that a lot. It's not just. Certainly. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah it's definitely. Yeah. An the line is. I didn't want to be like, I was blowing your minds, being like, what? People yeah. don't no, automatically no. like People this. don't like this. Like, I don't want it to look like PowerPoint. Yeah. So I think, so Death trip, by like, PowerPoint. trip, like, going back to, like, what you were saying, like, your question, like, I kind of feel it's kind of, I never really have put it put it in this type of a way, but like all the writing programs, like there's no uh, pressure to, to make the, the, the writing look good in 
Microsoft Word or Google or an email. As long as it's I all about the, it's all about whatever the words are. Pick right. a font, but that it, it doesn't even matter. As long as but, you don't use Comic Sans, no one cares right. <laughs> what but, your writing program. Yeah. Right, but most of the business world uses uh, PowerPoint, but like they don't have that that um, that art background or that visual education yeah. to be able to make slides that look good. So PowerPoint never looks good if you go to like any any given company or whatever. So, but but uh, what uh, going back to what Carrie said. It's a, it's a canvas, it's a vehicle. It's really a vehicle yeah. to be able mm -hmm. to like drive slides and presentations and- it, It's yeah. a tool. It's you a give, tool. You right. give a monkey a tool, right. you're not gonna get much. You give right. a craftsperson a tool and they're gonna build something for you. So it's kind yeah. of reiterate. I, I think what I'm looking for is how do I get people when I talk to clients of being like, I don't want it to be a PowerPoint. It's like, you don't want it to look like a PowerPoint. To look like a PowerPoint. But to, you mm -hmm. absolutely need that functionality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, trust yeah, yeah. me. Especially when you're making last minute edits right. and not telling right, anybody. Right. There's you lots of ways to do slides, man. <laughs> right. You don't want it to look like one of your PowerPoints. But right, right. we can make... I mean, you could you could make something gorgeous in Photoshop and drop it into PowerPoint, yeah. and it's a PowerPoint slide. Yeah. You know it's what I mean? It's a vehicle, so, like Brad said. Yeah. Versus a canvas, it's a vehicle. Yep. Cool. Yeah. That's a I'm, great way I'm, to look at it. I'm curious, like talking about like you know slides and all these different things, because I think now in the like the virtual or hybrid environment, I mean, design was always important, but I think people are realizing like if it's just a Zoom call, but it doesn't have good design or yeah. good lower thirds or like visual, even like really in, intriguing slides your event's not going to be that interesting. I'm curious, you know, kind of as we've transitioned, has there anything that maybe at first was like a little difficult to get used to? Like, I feel like now design can also be like you're designing a web page almost. I feel like it's kind of a learning curve. Was there anything in the beginning that was difficult or now you've actually really appreciated when it comes to like designing for virtual? Um, I would say, well, first of all, all of it was difficult in the beginning because we were just kind of <laughs> thrown into figuring all this stuff out right. and exploring like all the different platforms that are out there yeah. and like kind of narrowing that down. And like, it's just, it's so, and then, and then, um, you know, e educating our clients on like how all of this works, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and, but that's all communication. That's all meetings and presentations and putting together like describing something very complex like the like how everything works in you know visually like i love that kind of stuff where it's like like I, like this visual hasn't been made before but the, like this these are all the things we need to to say and then you put it together in a way that you're like oh i understand it it's kind of like like lower thirds are kind of like layers you have like your background layer which is like the video and then in front is the it, like the lower third comes on and then there there's something else that I'm forgetting but like you know there's three <laughs> yeah, or four yeah, layers yeah. in there of, as to like what the, uh, that turns into the output of the of the broadcast yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I think when you know Kramer's involved and I think it's just making these these broadcasts so much more dynamic yeah. and, and really stretching these platforms if we're designing for them there's so much limitations you know so many people say there's not a unicorn of a platform but like how <laughs> can we not break but like stretch and and make it look to the best it can mm -hmm. with the limitations we have. Mm -hmm, and I, mm -hmm. I think to that point, like I just have such a new appreciation. I've worked in the field for a long time. I've worked with you guys for a long time. I've never thought about lower thirds my entire career, except for now I like, you know, oh, where's the shadow gonna go? You know, like yeah. I think, uh -huh. I think it, the being forced to, to do things more virtually has at least brought my attention to detail, A, new, newfound respect for what you all do, and then also I think the audience is starting to get a little bit more sophisticated in what they look for in art and design. So I think that the expectations have have raised a little bit, mm -hmm. but um, I like the challenge, and, and I do think it's it's a new appreciation for, for that stuff that used to maybe go under the radar or just be assumed, like, well, as long as it's spelled right, who cares? And now I think people do appreciate that to right. flourish more. Well, and and it was an interesting challenge last year with the platforms because clients would see um, see other virtual events yep. and be like, oh, I want to. What platform do they use? I want my mm. virtual event to look like that. Yeah. But the the way that we always encourage our clients to pick a platform is like, what are the things you want to accomplish? Mm -hmm. But like from a back end, like because all these platforms right. do different things. Like that's where it needs to be rooted, and then. 
and then often like me and Carrie get thrown into like they like this platform over here, but we can't do that because we have to use this one. We need to and, make it still look, look make like it look little, right yeah. as good or as it possibly can. They're confusing platform capability with yes. what they really like is design. Mm. Sure, you know it's like oh right. actually whatever the client's like it's you didn't fall in love with the platform that your competitor or whatever you watch. You fell in love with yep. the design that was done, and we can do. And it's like sure. kind of educating of the difference between platform versus design and where they work together and where they're actually separate. So mm -hmm. that is, yeah, yeah. all about re-education. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think as we wrap up, and I think I ask this pe to people a lot, I ask it to like creative directors, but I think, you know, obviously this landscape creates so many new opportunities when it comes to like hybrid and virtual. And now like we're doing more and we've stretched ourselves and we've learned so many things, but I'm curious for you guys, is there anything that you're really looking forward to when it comes to like hybrid or kind of the future of design? Now that like, I think we've also been exposed to so much. I'm curious, is there anything that you're looking forward to or even looking forward to trying? Um, well, I know Carrie's looking forward to getting back out on the road. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pent up yeah. animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. as everyone else in the event industry is. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I like I like that now for doing um, a like a physical live event somewhere um, that we have this that that there's the opportunity to have like like this other this other component, the virtual component. You know, mm -hmm. just like adds more to the list of things that yeah. that we design for an event. You know, mm -hmm. which is like just so many different things. Yeah. Know? And when they all line up, nothing feels better. You know, when, when you can, yeah, you know, totally. it's like it's a complex thing at all. But when you get that thing where all the stars align and you can see it on a platform, you can see it live, you can see the email blast. You're like, this looks like flawless. It's just a great feeling. Mm -hmm. But I also think like it lives on more to having this like hybrid, you know, approach in your content. Yeah. You know, you can go back and view and it's not just... That's so physical. true. Yeah. yeah, so much of what we used to done, you, you work, I'm mean, explaining to this table a little bit more to listeners, but you work for six to seven months on this one project, and then as of February 8th at 10 p.m., it's over. It yeah. disappears forever. Yeah. And I don't think Certainly. that's really the case anymore. No, I don't think so. Video on, on demand. demand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, there, there was something a little special about that kind of like when it's done, it's done and you can move on. You a little bit more flexibility, but the reality of the digital world we live in is that that's happening in every industry. So, Well, and, and design uh, is a nice connective tissue between the people that are going to the live event and the people yep. that are viewing it online. It's, you know, it so. is the tissue, I would say. You know, right. that and proper broadcast, you know, a, yep. a good audio, good visual feed, and then what the design looks like is really the, the thing that holds it all together for both audiences. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think design has become of utmost importance even more so than ever. And also it's like living on, like mm -hmm. you said, beyond the event. And that's like, it's a lot of pressure, but it's also really exciting to see like the hard work that you do, like carry on into yeah. the future. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, great. I've learned so much from this conversation. I think this has been great. Yep. I mean, the difference between art and design is so interesting and fun, and it's awesome just to see what you guys do every day for events. But with that, I think that's all the time we have for today. Yep. I, Brad and I are working on a project, and he's got a deadline in like five minutes. Right, so right. So we should <laughs> probably let him go. It's a difference when we have internal guests versus external. Like, yeah. They owe me stuff. Time is <laughs> Well, with that, we thank you for listening to another episode of Pivot Points, and we'll see you next time.